AQA A-Level Physics. Uh, this is my second video on the scalars and vectors section of the specification. And mostly this is about equilibrium, equilibrium of forces. So this is the chunk of the specification. Uh, my last video did that top half. Basically, <clears throat> we're going to spend a bit of time looking carefully at this second half to do with forces and equilibrium and conditions for equilibrium and etc cetera, etc cetera. you'll see so if an object is in equilibrium well how do you know it's in equilibrium well it's either stationary or it's moving at a constant velocity so in other words it could be a, a static equilibrium or a dynamic equilibrium this is basically Newton's first law. Yeah, uh, I'll do videos on Newton's first law later. But if an object is not moving <coughs> or it's going at a constant velocity, then it's in equilibrium. And if it's in equilibrium, there is no resultant force acting on it, which is basically uh, part of Newton's second law of motion. So sigma fx. Now we know what fx is from the last video. So the sum of all the forces in the x direction is zero and the sum of all the forces in the y direction is zero. Now there's a couple of other interesting conditions as well. If there are three forces acting on the object, then they all have to go through the same point. And when you draw them to scale, they will form a closed triangle. In the last video, we looked at forming a rectangle. So you had your uh, horizontal and your vertical, and then the diagonal was the resultant. So the three forces formed a closed triangle. Another condition for equilibrium, and I'll do a whole video about moments. Uh, I'll do it in a moment. Uh, there is no resultant moment about any point as well, but we'll worry about that in another video. So forces, a few things about forces that you should appreciate. Uh, weight, weight is a force, weight is mg, little g, acceleration due to gravity, uh, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Weight always acts downwards, uh, unless you're in Australia, it acts upwards. Uh, it can be considered as a single force acting from the center of mass. So no matter how complicated an object is, we can consider the weight of the object as one single force acting from the center of mass of the object. Friction, friction always opposes motion. So it's either trying to stop an object from moving or if an object is moving, then it's trying to slow it down. It'll be opposite to the direction of motion. So friction always opposes motion. Uh, normal contact forces, well, the word normal means perpendicular. So it acts perpendicular to the surface, normal contact forces. Have a look at these, sketch them yourself. Uh, see if you can figure out, draw and label arrows to show the forces acting on these objects. So I suggest you pause the video and do a bit of sketching. And I'm going to talk about it in three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, so the cup. We have the weight of the cup acting from the center of mass, and we have a normal contact force there. So there's the weight of the cup, W, and there's the normal contact force, which is acting from uh, the middle of the bottom of the cup. Uh, this poor fella here, uh, we have the tension in the rope and we have the weight of the person downwards. Okay, tension is always a pulling force. You can't push things with a rope. You can only pull them. Uh, the car uh, traveling along, so we have the weight of the car acting from the center of mass. 
Uh, and the normal contact force, I can also draw that as a single force as well. So the normal contact force, N, I know will be around there. You know, again, there's four wheels touching the floor, but I'm adding all those forces together, one single force. We have um, resistive forces, friction, which will mostly be um, air resistance on a car. Uh, and then there must be some kind of force pushing it forward if it's in equilibrium. And I'm going to call that thrust. So T, T for thrust. Uh, the skier on the slope, well, we have the, the weight of the skier, W, acting from the center of mass of the skier. We have the normal contact force, which is perpendicular to the slope. Okay, uh, and we have the friction, F. There you go. Notice that those three forces go through the same point. OK, actually, maybe the friction force is a bit higher up because I'm not including air resistance. Uh, the ladder on a smooth wall. OK, now the weight of the ladder. So the center of mass of the ladder is about there. So that's the weight of the ladder. It's a smooth wall, so there's no friction uh, on the wall. So there is just a normal contact force on the wall there, N. Now, the, the other force, well, there's actually two forces. There'll be uh, a normal contact force at the floor, okay? And there will be a friction force at the floor, because if you imagine what, what does the ladder want to do? Well, the ladder will want to slide in that direction, won't it? So there's friction opposing that motion. Uh, and actually, if I did a little dotted line there, if I added those two forces together, they would actually go through that point there for reasons discussed earlier. So two normal contact forces, friction and the weight of the ladder. Here's a couple of questions that you can have a go at. I suggest you pause the video, pen, paper, calculator, get them done. And I'll show you my answers in three, two, one. So here we go. Uh, a picture of mass 0 0.7 kilograms. So we have the weight of the picture there. And if it's 0 0.7 kilograms, then its weight is going to be 0 0.7 times 9.8. Uh, an angle of 50 degrees with the vertical. So I'm going to add some angles to my diagram. So that's 50 degrees and that's 50 degrees there. And then the tension pulling that way on the picture. OK, so that's T and that's T. Calculate the tension in the thread. So what I do is I it's in equilibrium and I look at what's happening vertically. We say I resolve vertically. So what forces are acting down W? What forces are acting upwards? Well, it will be two because there's two of them, T cos. We know it's cos, don't we, from the last video. W equals 2T cos theta. And we know theta and we know W, so you can get T. Uh, the next one, a car of mass, 1,400 kilograms. So again, you can work out its weight is parked on a slope of 25 degrees. Identify the forces and calculate their magnitudes. So the weight of the car is from its center of mass, W. Uh, normal contact force there, perpendicular to the slope. 
and uh, it's not going down the slope so there must be some friction f stopping it going down the slope okay now uh what else do we know well we know that if that angle there is 25 degrees and this angle here is 25 degrees now uh, the way i would do it is i would resolve you i would resolve perpendicular to the slope and uh along the slope okay the reason being that if i let's say i resolve perpendicular to the slope so perpendicular to the slope is that direction and if I resolve in that direction, I don't have to worry about F because it's at right angles to it. Because it's at right angles to it, it doesn't have a component in that direction. So if I resolve perpendicular to the slope, then that gives me like away from the slope is N. And N will equal the component of W into the slope, which is W cos theta and so I can find n because I know w and I know theta then if I want to find f what I would do is resolve parallel to the slope so all the forces up the slope equal all the forces down the slope so up the slope we have f and down the slope we have W sine theta okay so we can work out F again when we resolve uh, parallel to the slope we don't have to worry about N because N is perpendicular to the slope so it doesn't have a component here's another question for you to have a go at a ball of mass 20 grams hangs on a thread it experiences a horizontal force due to it being charged in an electric field. Uh, as a result of this, it makes an angle of 25 degrees with a ver vertical draw. Free body diagram of the ball showing the forces acting on it. Calculate the tension in the thread. Calculate the force due to the electric field. A free body diagram means just draw the ball on its own. Draw the ball on its own. Show the forces acting on it. I'm just going to leave the ball there and add it. What forces are acting on it? Well, it's not in deep space, so we have W. We have the tension in the thread T. And we have this uh, force due to the electric field, which I'm going to call that uh, E. Why not? OK, uh, so this angle here will also be 25 degrees okay uh, the easiest thing to do first well what do we know we know the tension no sorry we don't we know the weight of the ball so the weight of the ball is mg mg uh, and that will be now uh, be careful it's 20 times 10 to the minus 3 because we're given the mass in grams yeah times 9.8 and that will tell you the weight of the ball okay when we know the weight of the ball then we would resolve vertically if we resolve vertically then we don't have to worry about e so resolving vertically so all the forces down so w equals t cos 25 doesn't it now we've worked out t now that we know t uh, if we resolve horizontally then we know that e this electric field force equals t sine 25 And so we've got all of them. Piece of cake. One more question. Practice makes progress. 
So have a go at this yourself. I'll show you that answer in three, two, one. So a set of traffic lights of mass five kilograms. So we have the weight. The weight is W, okay, which will be five times 9.8 Newtons. Calculate the tension in each cable. So if I call these tensions, if I call that T1, and I call that T2, Okay, now there are a couple of ways of doing this, you know. Um, the way that I would do it is I would resolve vertically and horizontally, and I'll end up with a couple of simultaneous equations which I can play around with. So that's what I'm going to do. I think that's probably the simplest way. So resolving vertically, so all the forces downwards, there's only one, W equals all the forces upwards. So that's the vertical components of T1 and T2. So that will be T1 uh, sine 25 uh, plus uh, T2 uh, sine 15. Now we can't solve this yet because we've got two unknowns so we need another equation how do we get the other equation we resolve horizontally so all the forces to the left so t1 cos 25 i should buy a graphics tablet you know i've actually got one but i don't like it i prefer using my mouse uh, equals t2 cos 15. So what you can do now, as I'm sure you've passed your GCSE maths, uh, is just substitute, get an expression for T1, you know, take that down there. So get an expression for T1 in terms of T2, and then substitute that in the first equation, uh, and then work it out. Two equations, two unknowns, piece of cake.